All right, welcome everybody. Uh, my name's Troy Hoffman. I'm, I'm the host of this show. This is our first episode ever. Wow. We're shooting of a podcast and filming it. <laughs> and our first guest ever is going to be Greg Johnson, yes. who I've known for a quarter of a century. That's a long time. He was actually time. my first client in my first real company uh, <laughs> 25 years ago, literally 25 years ago. Uh, that's how long we've known each other. And a lot of who I am today is because of who Greg was back then. And a lot of who I will be in the future is because of who Greg has become. And as I spend time with him and hang out with him, I pick up his energy, his wisdom, and we just get time to get together and hang out. And I learned so much and he's constantly challenging me. Every time he comes into California, he constantly challenges me and he's like, Troy, what are you gonna do in this area of your life? Or in like random lunches or random things we do when he's in yeah. town. And he just happened to be flying in. I got a text from him yesterday and he's like, hey, I'm coming into town, yeah. you know, and I, and I was like, yeah, let's connect. Yeah, I was like, absolutely. Greg, do you want to do a podcast? We're just kind of randomly trying this, yeah. see where this goes and see what we can do with all this. And so I was like, Greg, do you want to come on? He's like, sure, definitely. Let's do this. Absolutely. And so it's funny how the universe or God or whatever you want to call it works. Yeah. We just listen to the voice. And I was like, Greg, let's do this. And, yeah. and, and everything lines up for you sometimes especially when you're listening to the voice. And that was the opportunity to be Greg, one of my first people ever in my life to really help me build a company and really guide in some ways massively. So Greg wow. Johnson, welcome, man. Well, it is an honor to be here, Troy. Yes. I, you are a machine. You, you, you are a producer. And I've always uh, noticed that about you. you uh, you're not defined. I heard it said this way, we're defined by the mountain that stops us that were defined by that mountain. And I just don't think you've come to a mountain yet that's defined you. You're still climbing. Mm -hmm. So you're still going to the next level, so to speak. I look at the sign here in, your, in this studio. I, I love when I came in it. It says, things great do. And then I realized, no, it's, it's, it's do great <laughs> things. And the, the sign that I'm looking at goes up. And so that's kind of like, uh, who you are and what you've been. So I'm, I'm proud of your, your influence uh, in people's lives and your business des desire to be uh, about your business. So it's, it's awesome to be here. Honor to be here. I love your new place, this studio, this space is just, uh, it's very creative, very alive. So That's it's awesome. awesome. Yeah. So Greg is actually a traveling pastor and speaker yep. and actually impacts a lot of young people around the nation and around the world. And he works with all ages of people actually, but his yep. target is really the young people when their minds are yep. forming at an age where the, the most impact occurs is when they're young. Yep. And, and Greg, I'd love to you to, to explain why that's so important to impact okay. young people like, and why you chose that age group yeah. to impact. And then, because right now, my focus is trying to help people that are after they're 18, after they're 20, yeah. they're starting businesses, they're, they're stressed out of life, they're crashing in their bodies, and they're, and whatever it is, how do we impact the people that are building companies, building organizations, building different things to yeah. make sure they hold it together in all areas? Hold it together. And what lessons could we actually teach young people that would actually propel them way beyond the people today. Okay, one of the things I would come across, first of all, the voice. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Lord, the voice. My inner self spoke to me mm -hmm. at 14 years of age. Mm -hmm. And I'm now, well, I'm, I'm knocking on 60. So here I am at 14. That's when I started living the kind of a life that would be no regrets. And so that's where it started for me at 14. So my formative years were filled with wonder. They were filled with uh, examples of how to, how to march forward. Now, because of that, one of the guys that I really in, uh, spoke on a lot to young people was Joseph, you know, uh, out of the scripture. And, and, and I'm gonna divide his life into four areas. So if you're listening to this, these may just land in your heart and become stages of life. Here they are. Mm -hmm. Dreamer, worker, prisoner, ruler. Again, mm -hmm. dreamer, worker, prisoner, ruler. Mm -hmm. Now, Scripture says that Joseph had a dream. Mm -hmm. And I tell young people all the time, it doesn't say nightmare. It says dream. Because I believe that people are made to dream and to fulfill the dream because life is a dream. Mm -hmm. yes. The voice calls it a dream. I'll throw that word out there. God 
gives people dreams, mm -hmm. not, not nightmares. Yes. So in that season of life, when you're young, you find your why, you discover your why, your wife discovers you, the why. Many books are written on this today, as you know. Uh, Start With Why is one of those books. Um, you gotta know your why. Mm -hmm. So that's the dream phase. But again, I'm gonna go through them. Dreamer, worker, prisoner, ruler. Dreamer, worker, prisoner, ruler. Every great dream degenerates into a four letter word, mm -hmm. which you have proven you're good at, and that's called work. Mm -hmm. Work the plan, plan the work. You, you're so good at that. But here's what I tell young people all the time. You're going to jail. You're going to jail. Because Joseph was a dreamer, and then he became a worker in, a, in Potiphar's house. He was sold as a slave into Egypt. Mm -hmm. And then he was unjustly accused of taking advantage of Potiphar's wife, and he ended up in jail. My word to young people, you're gonna end up in jail. Everyone is going to the jail of unfulfilled expectations. That's good. Big time. True. Like you go from dream to work and, and you may think, well, man, I, I was a great dreamer and I've been such an awesome worker. I deserve free time, not jail time. No, you're going to jail. Everyone goes to jail. The jail of unfulfilled expectations. Mm -hmm. the, the things where I thought it would work out by now. I was a dreamer and a worker. Shouldn't I be getting my payday? That's good. You know, and I know, it never goes that way. No, the, you, the disasters that hit us in disasters. life. In midlife, and you're just like, I worked my ass off, and yeah. oh, why didn't this all come together yet? Like, Ab why am I still struggling in this area? Why am I still struggling in this area? Why is this falling apart? Like, Absolutely. Yeah. Now, the people that can get through jail will end up in rulership. And that's the four areas you talk about, where you rule and not you're not ruled over by your devote your emotions, your 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 uh, addictions or whatever, mm -hmm. because nobody really wants to be an addictive or an addicted slave mm -hmm. to anything. Okay, we right. don't we we don't want to be that. So so you, the the idea is you end up in rulership. So dreamer, worker, prisoner. So let's ruler. talk about the prison okay. side of it, because that's where. A lot of people, like, I mean, I was there, and I still am there a yeah, lot of times. Yeah, so Like, am I. what are some of those specific areas that people get locked in their own self-induced prisons or prisons that we just end up in in our lives? You know, a crappy body, a cr uh, the company's struggling, our businesses are struggling, like, we're not connecting in our marriage, we're not connecting in our relationships, we're not connecting with our kids. Like, what are some of those prisons that you've seen, because you've worked with, Greg, Greg's literally traveled all over the country, worked with some of the top leaders of all types of organizations, giant mega churches in different areas, different all over the country and all over the world, and business leaders all over the place. Like, what are some of the, these prisons? How do they end up there? What happens there? And how do people get out of this prison, Greg? Ha! Well, you know, because of my background and because whenever you ask questions like that, my mind instantly goes to things I've said to young people for years. Mm -hmm. And out of that, you know, that famous bestseller called The Word of God, I can't help but use that as a, yeah. as a drawing board, but please understand that these, these are just truths. They're, they're, whether they're found in this book or that book, they're truths and they, they work. And uh, it, would, it would be this, uh, having lost sensitivity, they gave themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with continual lust for more. So we start with sensitivity. And when we lose our sensitivities, we move into sensualities, which become impurities, which we end up needing more. Now, the more we, we clamor for more, for more, but, but that's not, there's an unhealthy more. It's where you're, you're saying, I, the fix that I had last night is not gonna help me because I've desensitized my heart. Mm -hmm. How do people get into jail, that kind of a jail? I think through, 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 uh, uh, compromising their their true them, their true them, their their convictions, mm -hmm. and uh, so now the the downside of that is that people who hold to their convictions can sometimes become spiritually prideful, uh, culturally they, they become prideful. Well, look at what I did. I I have not failed here and there, and that is not a place to be. That is not a place to be, to be a prideful, 
superiorist. Mm. <laughs> Is that a word, superiorist? Moral superiority, where you take on a, a sort of uh, swag, that spiritual swag that makes other people feel insecure. So when you're talking about moving in from, like you're working your butt off, yeah, and then these triggers are showing up, or these things uh, that make us want to like, how do we start sedating from the pressure? How do we start handling all this? And that's where people start going to like, man, hey, I'm just gonna drink a couple glasses of yeah. wine at night, yeah. and I'm starting to drink three, and then I'm gonna use alcohol to actually calm myself down, I'm not an alcoholic, or whatever it is. It could be cigarettes, it could be food, it could be massive amounts of sugar destroying their body, it could be, going to porn, it could be going to uh, sex like crazy. Whatever that is, is what it starts, starts breaking down us in different ways because we're not doing healthy habits. We're not doing things that are building our bodies. We're not doing things that are building our mind. We're, we're like, I'll, I'll, I'll use Netflix sometimes yeah. as the date. Yeah, of like, course. I mean, I'll, I'll, like, I'm fried, it's a long day, literally 14 hours of like questions and things hitting all day. And I just want to zone out. I don't want to see or talk to anybody, but I'm using Netflix or Prime Yes, yeah. today sometimes I'm watching whatever random show is on, and I'm just like, oh, I'll watch just an hour. Then it becomes two, then it becomes three, then I've wasted oh, yeah. three hours of my life just trying to get my mind to shut down. And, 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 and I start creating this prison, essentially, yeah, yeah. like you were talking about, yeah, yeah. or other things. Like, I'll, like I'll, I'll go to the sugar lately. Like, the last few yeah. months, it's been like sugar. Like, I have these cravings, yeah. but it destroys my body, and it really has massive impact, which people don't even talk about enough is how bad sugar is and it's these things and it's like how do you see people breaking out of these prisons we put ourselves in you know what I mean and how do they go to kingship how do yeah. they go to rulership. this rulership. rulership how do they go to queenship whatever it is where they're if they're if they're a man or a woman how do they get to this next level of life where they're out of yeah. out of slavery they're out of scarcity they, they, they've got to a place of security, but they're going to significance. Yep. What does that look like? How do, how do people really, of the leaders you've seen, and the people that have walked through this journey, how do they get into that level of significance and, and true rulership of their lives where they're having huge impact? They're, they're succeeding in all levels in their body, in their being, you know, yeah. and they're, they're balanced with their loved ones and in their, in their businesses, whatever that may be, running churches in your world or they're running companies like in my world or they're running nonprofits or they're running their families. What, what does that look like and how do people get there from your experience, Greg? Well, you know, again, I, I go to that book, Godliness with Contentment is Great Gain. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I listened to Seth Godin on his new podcast. That's great. Ugh. He talked about a, a, a primitive group, uh, a primitive people mm -hmm. that are super content and happy. They work 15 hours a week. 15 hours a week. And... And the reason they work 15 hours a week is because 15 hours a week gives them enough and they have enough. They're content with, with enough. Now we live in America, you, we live in the United States where we serve the God of, I want more than enough. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a place for that. I, I believe the human spirit is designed to, 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 to want more, more, more. Not to consume it on its own self, but to be a, 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 a blessing to others. Mm -hmm. The universe is expanding right now, and it's never quit. So God's obviously into more. So things are just get. It's just getting bigger. It's going mm -hmm. out there. Okay, yes. it's not stopping. Nope. It, it just keeps on. Things are popping up. We discovered a new planet the other day in formation. They actually filmed it, and and it's just so. So more is a good word. More mm -hmm. is a good word. But so is contentment. Mm -hmm. So is contentment, and it will always be immoral to smoke $100 bills. It'll always be immoral. <laughs> I've heard of people who literally, because they have so much, they can smoke a $100 bills just because they have it. Well, that'll never be right. So they don't understand there's a balance and moderation, mm -hmm. moderation. You know and I know, moderation. So if I'm watching three hours of Netflix uh, every night because I, you know, I just need it to survive, I, what I lose is confidence. I lose confidence in myself. I'm not being true to me. I'm not being true to my best self. Mm -hmm. And when you don't have confidence, uh, you don't have, you, you, won't, you won't see attraction. People will not be attracted to you. You must know who you are. Uh, I heard a guy uh, say the other day, don't find a job, be a job. Okay, think about that. Let's talk, be a job.
-hmm. that that today is the way people can can get themselves ahead don't go don't go just look for a job be a job you're the brand you be a job you 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 be the essence of a filmmaker or or a motivational speaker or a pastor or leader a uh, business developer you be the job don't, present yourself as the brand mm -hmm. that you're a walking job and and, and as you as you develop your, your where you sweat those things you, wherever you go people are like receiving from the the radiation of your of your convictions to things and stuff like that. I see that all the time. So what are some of the convictions that really help people be dynamic? I mean, what does that look like? What are some of the convictions that you've held? And just like daily practical things, like how you manage your life, how you connect with your wife. I know you and your wife are super highly connected. You know, the way you manage your kids and the way you connect with your kids and the way you connect with your community and the way you connect with everything like everything you do Greg is like you're really trying hard into your body and your and everything you're doing and then keeping yourself in shape and for almost being 60 really yeah wow and in you look great well thank you you look I, amazing Greg if you're turning 60 shirts cover a multitude yeah of <laughs> but you're looking great thank you you know you've held and you kept going yeah, the energy yeah. levels are you still have the same energy level and you're turning 60 that you did 25 years ago, oh, 30, if not years even ago. more. 50 years ago. I mean, you're just like, your energy levels 55 are massive. Years ago, yeah. So what are the convictions that you've held that gives you this energy, that you've created this amazing life for yourself? Like, what does that look like? What are the practical <laughs> things that yeah. you're doing? Like, well, yeah, and I talk about, you. you've got to, you, there's three people you need to be true to. Mm -hmm. And again, this is the guy, Joe, dreamer, prisoner, uh, no, dreamer, worker, prisoner, ruler. Uh -huh. Now, why was he thrown in jail? He was thrown in jail because he was accused of taking advantage of his boss's wife, mm -hmm. okay? And it, it's pretty bad. He got thrown in the slammer for something he didn't do. But when she said to him, now, you know, this is just so amazing. He, she said to him, why don't you lie with me? Why, here, come on, let's have a fling. You and I, my husband's out of town and you're, you got an accent and, mm -hmm. and you're, you're pretty, pretty impressive. I've been watching how you work. You're, you are, you are the kind of guy I would like to spend the night with. Well, he said, how can I? Yeah. How can I? And, and, and it was like, okay, how can I do this great wickedness and, and sin against God and look my master. Those are the three phrases. Look my master. Like your husband is my boss yeah. and he, listen he's not here but he's here it's good he's not here in the room but he's here in the room mm -hmm. can you imagine if everybody acted like people they work for and or love are in the room with them everywhere they go can you imagine the kind of our taxes would go down. This is good. I mean, I mean, there, there, our prisons would be, would, would, we would not need prisons. We would not need prisons because, well, we might need it for those, you know what I'm saying? There'll always be yeah, people that right. just don't want to be true to others. Look, my master, be true to others. So be true to others. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was a, steak, uh, a bus boy in a steakhouse, I didn't care if the boss was watching or the waiters were watching. I was doing it for somebody else. I was doing it for my voice or my God. I was doing it. And then he said, how can I? So she's like, come on, we're alone. He says, no, I'm here. And she says, what do you mean? He says, I'm with me wherever I go. I'm just with me. I don't leave myself at home. I'm with me. So that when I come back to me, I don't have to reintroduce me to myself and have civil war you're being you wherever you go. you go joseph never forgot who he was where he was mm -hmm. and even now, though my boss is not here he's here my boss is here. here even though my loved one is not here they're, they're here. here even though the people i care about are not here they're, they're here because here. i am me wherever i, I go, go. That's great, Greg. No, I mean, that's what keeps your pants up. I mean, because... It, it, <laughs> Be real, raw, and relevant. Well, constantly. yeah, I mean, it's called the belt of truth, yeah, man. When you're wearing truth around the middle, yeah. your spiritual pants will be coming down.
Because the gravity of a fake life mm -hmm. will pull your pants down. That's good. That's a good quote. The it's gravity just, of your fake life will... Uh, we need pull, to make a meme like that. The gravity of your uh, fake life will pull your pants yeah, down. Yeah, you know, another way to say it, you know, fake is a big word today. Uh, you know, as we know, fake news, fake this. Yeah. But the gravity of a double life, that's how I say it in churches. The yeah. gravity of a double life will pull your spiritual pants down. And, and, and I'm going to say this, and it's so true, whether you are an atheist, whether you believe in God, agnostic, it doesn't matter. We are not punished for, and I'm going to use that really weird word, mm. sins. We're mm. not punished for sins. Sin just means miss the mark. We're punished by them. Yes. The things we screw up, we get punished by them. So don't get personal with okay. God and say, oh, you're a weenie. Because yeah. you, no, 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 don't yeah. do that. Don't own it. Yeah. Own it. Nobody wants to own it, man. We want to be victims, victims, victims. Let me tell you, you're not a victim. No one's a victim. You cannot be victimized in your response to what people do to you. We've buried ourselves. Our yeah. actions bury ourselves. Like I bury myself all the time. Like I almost want to start writing out like have a thing like every time I'm lying about something. Yeah. I'm going to lie when I'm going to wake up with my alarm. I'm going to lie that I'm actually working right now. I'm gonna, whatever I'm doing, I'm lying that this workout was good enough. I'm, like all these lies and then, then missing the mark. And, oh, I'm just going to have one soda. And those, well, of like, course. I'm, I'm just going to watch another one more hour of Netflix. Or, like, these are my struggles. And it's like, I'm going to lie, say I'm going to get that email out to that person. I'm going to lie, say I'm going to call that person back. And I bury myself. And I don't get to things. And the little things I'm not going to. And the details I'm missing keep crashing Absolutely. my life. Where I take these actions of like, Oh, I'm, whatever it is, and and it just causes more problems. Like, yeah. oh, I'm gonna try starting this business idea, and we put a bunch of money. Then I don't have money because I'm trying to do this, and this thing didn't work. And it's been years of that, and you always are paying this price in different choices. Like, it's crazy. Absolutely, but what what I marvel about you is is how your your mind works and how your entrepreneurial gifting and wiring just has produced lots of results in ways that. I've never seen in my own personal experience. I have a different lane. And there's grace for your lane. There's grace for your lane, everybody. There's just grace for your lane. Get out of your lane, no grace. So you gotta know your lane, and you're not a multi-lane. No one's absolutely everything. Uh, no. You gotta find your place. If you wanna be dynamic, then go specific on things and, 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 and focus, focus, focus. Do the hard work. And we, we hear this all the time, you know? Yeah, I'm still so, trying to figure out even my own lane, like where exactly <laughs> is my yeah. great gifting and talent and how do I really stay in my lane and make sure all my time and all my energy is doing the right thing. Like I like launching yeah, businesses. I like building leaders. I like helping impact people and share, like just literally just share, here are the problems I have. Yeah. I like working with leaders and, and people and entrepreneurs and even like pastors, leaders, yeah. organization leaders, whatever that is, and helping develop them and giving them stuff that I wish I had known literally 25, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. and, and I wish I had applied, not just learned, but applied all this stuff years ago. Yeah. And then that's what I'm trying to figure out. How do I do this? Yeah. How do I give out the right information at the right time to the right people so it changes their life? And they're not committing suicide. They're not getting depressed. They're not ruining their marriages. The relationships aren't falling apart. Businesses aren't falling apart. Like, like we just how do we energize the whole world around me so things all rise together? People aren't living in hospitals and yeah. aren't falling apart. And all the experiences that I had when I was a kid, and, you're and what Greg was talking about before is like these experiences that we have when we're younger, how it truly helps us shape and define what our destiny is going to be who we can are and these passions that rise up inside of us, yeah. part of that is finding your lane. Yeah, like I know absolutely. suicide's a big one for me. I've experienced it in multiple levels with multiple friends and in really close people to my life over many years. And I feel like that's part of it. The struggles I saw my family go through in business and my parents go through in relationships, like my, the world, even other entrepreneurs I know, and like people that are running churches or people that are running uh, nonprofits, the pain and, and, and the anguish they go through. And if there's some things we can give them that help them ignite them and light, light you on fire and all the people around me, that we really can have deep impact, truly deeply inspire those giftings and talents pull them out of people, help really pull them out of people so they can rise and bring up the people around them and just really help change more. Like, oh. cause I've, I've been lucky enough to experience that and even experience that through people like you.
Mm -hmm. Like Greg, do you, yeah. like I. <laughs> so no lie. So I would drive Greg around. I even shaved the back of his neck for Greg. <laughs> no lie. Like that's how I served Greg. Yeah. I drove him around. I did whatever Greg wanted me to do when I was younger, just so I could be around him 24/7 yeah. to see wow. not who he was up here, not who he was on a camera sitting yeah. here, but who he was when I'm shaving the back of his neck. Yeah. Like no lie, like he's like I'm like, I, like we're about to do a film for him, yeah. a shoot, a photo shoot or something for promotional. But that's the level of truth and the reality that you have to get to know people. Yeah, no. you know what I mean. No. And like really get to know people, see how people are when they're not on camera, see how people are when they're not on on stage, see how people are when they're when you're just sitting at a coffee shop in some random yeah. city in some random state, to, and how they treat the waiter. Oh, how they treat the time. server, how they treat the people around them, just and then you pick up those skill sets and it just impacts the rest of your life. So that's the level of depth I've got from you, Greg. I mean, like, it was crazy. And yeah. all the quotes and all the sayings, and even some of your sayings, like 25 years later, I'm starting to see the value of some of the things you said yeah. and the truth behind those comments. Yeah. And a lot of us don't have ears to hear at different yeah, stages in our life, time. but the learning lessons you're getting even from today. The things that Greg's talking about is like this dream. Then you go through this work right. stage, then this prison, prison. stage, then this rulership, rulership stage. This concept may not resonate with you right this second, but years later, you're gonna get this revelation of, oh, I get it. The dream stage paid off. I'm in this prison. It's okay to be in this prison right now. It's just part of my journey. I will get to the rulership. Absolutely. And so Greg, I think like, that, that right there is amazing, like so. Absolutely, and it's an honor. And, 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 and fruit that remains, like hearing you say that a, a quarter of a century later, um, just, it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't make me a, an idol, it makes me a hero. It's good. You know, because I don't want to be no one's idol. No. No, go, 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 go get your own you did, identity. You did your thing. Yeah, I will, but you I sure want to be a hero. By yeah. living your life. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. and that's, that's what's great about you, Greg. So I don't know if we should go any longer today. Yeah, yeah, I think this is I'm not even sure great. how long we've gone. Yeah. But Greg, I love you, and I'm so grateful to have you in my life, and thank you for hopping on the show with us, and being our first episode, and for supporting me, Isn't and starting my first business. Yes. So high five, <laughs> like high seriously, five. man. It's so it's crazy how the world works. Oh, it's and when awesome. you listen to the voice, yeah, yeah. and just and yeah. it's like yeah. he didn't have to buy T-shirts from me. No, he just heard the voice and called and launched me on this journey, and I'm grateful till this day. So awesome! Thank you guys for the first show of episode. Come on, one. Yes, woo, yeah, yes. <laughs>